And I think it's good. It's on the chain, so it's it's no place but down now. <gasps> oh my god. <gasps> this thing's fast. Oh my god. Alrighty, so yes, that happened. It tested. You did see the footage. It happened. And I am beyond excited and thrilled for your guys' reaction to the testing footage. It looks like everyone, pretty much everyone, is super thrilled with what they saw in the footage. This thing hauls. It looks so impressive. The only element where it's moving slower than the rest of the coaster is the zero G roll, but you want the coaster to be moving slower through the zero G roll to create that almost like weightlessness um, and hang time as you go through it. But what's really impressive is the vertical loop and the second Immelman. And I'm going to be honest, I feel like you guys didn't notice the second Immelman. A lot of you were focusing on the vertical loop, but if you pay close attention, there is so much more speed in the second Immelman than there is in the vertical loop. And the reason is, after the vertical loop, it heads into a runway that goes through an underground kind of half tunnel and then into the second Immelman, and it comes out with such quick speed. Um, anyways, I also feel like that some of you missed the beautiful design of the Yukon Striker trains. This is just the back. This is the gold train. Um, it has the gold back paneling. I don't know if all the trains are gold um, or what, um, but I have a feeling they're going to be different color coded because that's usually what B&M and Cedar Fair Parks do. In fact, I think a lot of parks do that. Every train has a different color code. So, you know, what's train one, train two, train three. Um, but saying that, um, what um, I'm most impressed by is the station. So the station went from looking like a dull rectangular square and I was getting really nervous. I didn't want to say it in my videos, but I was definitely getting nervous to suddenly it's got shape. It's taking form. It's starting to look like a mine shaft. It's going to look awesome. Um, but yeah, so what they were doing in these test runs is they the ride was obviously in manual mode. So a lot of you were commenting, why wasn't the drop chain engaged? So this is the first test run ever. So that is why it moved up the lift hill extremely slow. That is not the lift hill speed. I can promise you that Wonderland is aiming to get as many riders through this ride as quickly as possible. And that chain speed is not the final chain speed. Um, and if you notice, there's a guy, there's two guys following the train around. So every time it hit a brake or the chain lift, it would stop for about 30 seconds and they would investigate the train, make sure everything connected, everything's good. Um, and then they would move to the next little control panel and start manually moving the train to the next one. Um, so unfortunately, we were there from 1030 in the morning until about... 4 p.m. I don't know. I don't know what time we left, but we were there for like four to five or six hours in the cold, standing in puddles, freezing, um, <laughs> freezing our little butts off. And uh, it was definitely uncomfortable, but I'm super thrilled we got the footage. The reason we knew it was testing is we arrived to do a construction update and I wanted to do something unique. We both had our drones. We were going to film a construction update, taking off with our drones facing each other. Um, had something totally planned and then uh, film from different angles of the park and kind of do a construction update side by side. But it turned out uh, we started hearing the lift siren. So when a B&M coaster and other coasters turn on, there's a loud siren that plays that alerts anyone in the area that may be working on the ride or near the ride that it's about to start running. So we heard that and we knew get up. So uh, we flew our drones in the rain. We probably shouldn't have, but we did. <laughs> So we risked losing our drones, but we had to get the footage for you guys. It was the first test run. So hopefully you enjoyed the footage. If you're wondering why it was shaking so much when I was holding the camera, it's because we were freezing. I was super excited. Um, and uh, maybe I'll include my raw reaction in this video. Um, but I had to delete some audio because I was swearing a bit. Um, don't swear. It's not cool. Um, but yes, I did swear just because I was super excited. So I can't obviously put that in any of my videos. Um, but I'm really thrilled that you guys really enjoyed the videos. I'm super happy. Um, this coaster definitely turned out way better than I thought. The vertical loop and the second Immelman are very impressive. 
the coaster has a lot of speed even in that first moment. It loses a little speed in the zero G roll and that's because there's hardly a height difference between the zero G roll and the first moment. But wow, this coaster hauls. I can tell from everyone's comments, messages, um, that they are impressed as well. And I wanna invite you. So if you want to create a reaction video to the footage of Yukon Striker testing, you are welcome to use this footage. As long as you credit me in the description with a link to the channel, use this footage in your channel. I want to share my footage as much as possible. I never wanna um, kind of limit anyone else from reacting to anything that we make. So always feel free to react to what we do as long as you tag us. Um, with a link to our YouTube channel and uh, promote us. Anyways, thanks so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and share this video for others to enjoy. Have a good one. Bye. It's on the drive tires now. It's, it's entering the chain dog. Craig, get the whole coaster in view. Okay, he just checked the drop to make sure it's good. He's moving it forward onto the chain now. And I think it's good, it's on the chain, so it's, it's no place but down now. <gasps> oh my God. This thing's fast. Oh my god.